Let's prove for x and y integers, if the sum x plus y is odd, then x minus y is odd. This is a direct proof, and it is one of our first. So, you might think you need to break it into cases. x can be even or odd, y can be even or odd, but we do not need all of that. We will work with definitions. So we assume x plus y is odd. Then there exists some integer with x plus y equals 2k plus 1. This is the definition of odd. Now we're trying to show that x minus y is odd, which means we need x minus y to be two times an integer plus one. Okay, well, we can get x minus y from x plus y. It's x plus y and then subtract off two y, right? If you add these two, you certainly get x minus y. And now I can fill in what I know about x plus y that is 2k plus 1. Now you see I am in really great shape. I can factor 2 out here, and I have k minus y plus 1, which is odd because this k minus y is an integer. And this completes the proof. I will put my box right here. Let's prove this if and only if statement, which says that for an integer x, 18 divides x, if and only if both a 9 and 2 divide x. And we will use, or you can use, we will, this proposition that is boxed in blue. Well, we know that in an if and only if proof, there are two directions. Let's say this is um, proposition Q and this is proposition R. We must show Q implies R and we must show R implies Q. We must go in both directions for an if and only if. Okay, well, the first direction is in this direction. So we assume 18 divides x and we will show that 9 divides x and also that 2 divides x. Okay, here we go. Well, 18 divides x This means there exists, let's say, a y and z with 18y equals x, okay? This is the definition of divides. Well, you see that 18 is 9 times 2, so we may rewrite this. So rewriting this exact same expression, we have... 9 times 2y is x. So I group one way and I see that as 2y is an integer, 9 divides x. Moreover, well, we could also write it this way. As 9y is an integer, 2 divides x. Thus, well, we're done with this direction. We have shown 9 divides x and 2 divides x. Okay? So this direction was the more straightforward direction. In fact, I have not used this proposition in blue yet, although we will. It's supposed to be a straight line. <laughs> okay, in any case, we will work with a non-straight line.
Let's do this direction where we assume two things, that 9 divides x and 2 divides x, and we will show 18 divides x. Okay, so this is going in this direction of the if and only if. We have 9 divides x and 2 divides x, so then there exists, we'll say c and d integers with 9c is x and 2d is x. Okay? Okay, so let's talk about our strategy here. We must think about what we want to show. We want to show 18 divides x. We do not have it yet. We have 9c is x, we have 2d is x. If for some reason we can conclude that c is even, that would be it's of the form, say, 2k for some integer k, then we would have this, right? Because we would have 9 times 2 times k, where k is an integer, equals x. So if this would be a goal of ours, if we can get c is an even number, then with this expression here, we can conclude that 18 divides x. Okay, similarly, if you could show d is a multiple of 9, then you could argue that 18 divides x. But I'm going to work with this one, and I'm going to work to show that c is even, then we will be able to conclude 18 divides x. So how will I do this? Well, you see I have these two different products, 9c and 2d, they both equal x, so I may set them equal. We have that 9c is equal to 2, oops, 2d. 2d. Now d, these are all integers here, and what this equation is saying is that 2 divides this product. So as d is an integer, we see that 2 divides this product. And this is where we will use the proposition, okay? Because we see here, if p is prime and p divides, divides a product, then p divides one of the two. So here, 2 is prime. Using the proposition, we have that 2 divides 9 or 2 divides c. However, 2 does not divide 9. We know this. Okay, 2 does not divide 9, therefore, 2 divides c. Okay? Remember, this is what I said I was trying to get to, and so this is wonderful. And at this point, we will just complete the proof. So 2 divide c means there exists a k and z with 2k equals c. Okay, and now, as I mentioned, we will go back to this and put in this value for c, and we will be able to conclude 18 divides x. So then x equals, well, it's equal to 9 times c, which is 9, times 2k, which is 18k. Yay, okay, good, as k is an integer. 18 divides x, right? We have 18 times k is x, k is an integer, therefore 18 divides x. This is what we want to show. Um, okay, so we have shown both directions. Maybe I will just finish my proof. So therefore, 18 divides x, if and only if, 2 divides x and 9 divides x. And we are finished.
with this if and only if proof. I'd like to do one more if and only if, although the difference here is we have a prove or disprove. And you know, the statement is about even and odd. This is concept we have been working with for many years of our life, but the proving techniques are what is brand new to us. Okay, so if we think about x and y are even as p, x plus y is even as q, we are trying to prove a p if and only if q, or trying to prove or disprove, I should say. And then I reminded you of the truth table. In the last one, we knew it was true. We're told to prove. And a proof there is two directions. We assume P, we show Q. The other direction, we assume Q, we show P. This one, prove or disprove. Now, I will tell you the if and only if is false. But one direction is true. And I will go ahead and prove that. is the following, which says that this direction. So let's prove this, and then I will comment, or maybe I'm commenting now, this doesn't prove the if and only if. It only proves one direction. Okay, so we will assume x and y are even, even, okay, so then, there exists, let's say, a, b integers with x is 2a and y is 2b. Okay, so if we want to get the sum x plus y even, we just add. So we have x plus y, which is 2a plus 2b, and this is 2a plus b. Okay, wonderful. So as a plus b is an integer, we see x plus y is even. Okay? I'm putting my box because that's all I can prove. However, this direction does not prove the if and only if. In fact, I will box, we are disproving, okay? So what we know here, if you sort of go back to the truth table, is if this is true, well, this can't be false. So this case doesn't occur of the if and only if being false, right? If I assume P is true, it follows that Q is true. That is what I just proved. So having a T and an F doesn't happen, but you see, there's another time the if and only if can be false is when Q is true and P is false. This is where our counter example will come in. Another way to think about it is that this direction is false. And why is it false? Well, all you need to prove this is false is a counter example with justification. So counter example. Let's take x is 3 and y is 5, okay? x and y um, are odd. We know, we can assume every integer is even or odd, but not both. So x, neither x nor y is even. And x plus y is 8 which is even, so therefore x plus y even does not imply x even and y even, okay? So this direction is false and overall you know, so we showed that we can have a place where Q is true, P is false, making the if and only if false. So the if and only if, so X and Y even 
if and only if x plus y is even is false. Okay, because this one direction is not true. So I like this example, despite the fact that the idea of even and odd is not hard, because we see an example of an if and only if one direction is true, but that does not mean anything about the if and only if. We find a counterexample in one direction, and that makes the overall if and only if false. Maybe I should stand over here, okay?